Plasticizers. Um, interesting, I just ran across a friend of mine on YouTube here uh, dealing with some plasticizers and it's giving them hell. And I'm going to borrow this video here for educational reasons. And um, obviously I'm telling you that because I get free use of it now. So here we go. Um, Fresh standard concrete meets all durability and solidity requirements, but it is often extremely hard and viscous and difficult to work with. A natural chemical phenomenon lies at the root of this problem. Cement particles in concrete are irresistibly drawn towards each other when... So this would be the sand, the aggregates. Well, aggregates are heavy, right? But nevertheless, the sand particles here, we're going to say, all are being drawn together. Now, I think he's using it in an uh, application where it's a finished wall system. And um, he does great work. I mean, he's just like whew, plastering plastering demon so um just great work uh mac mac he's on youtube here max plaster so um the um so it's being drawn together when they put you when you put plaster sides in here it lets you wrap all around this stuff so it makes it flow and install easy but remember it just pushed everything away so it creates like a tearing effect a real like nasty beach sand that's that's not bonding when you rub your hand the beach sand it's not smooth. So it's got to go run its course for you to be able to then seed it again. Um, because it's, it, plasticizers have a timeline on them, depending on how you, much you put into them, how much is allowed to be put into the mix. Um, too much and just doesn't work at all. But they can, I've made quite a few mistakes with plasticizers. Um, it's based on the quantity of water you're replacing. Um, or your product might say based on the quantity of uh, something else, but it's water you're replacing. This product is a product, and each product is different. Right now, I'm dealing with Sikaflex products, and but they come in a concrete truck, so I don't have access to. I do have access to what product I get to choose from them, but my gosh, it's so hard to get the right formula. And here we go. Let's go on from here. Now you have an idea about that. Let's go. With water. To produce concrete with greater fluidity without adding water, Lafarge's scientists have developed their own technology on dispersant additives commonly known as super plasticizers. And it allows it to do what that sample sort of shows. It just runs. Um, it's just beautiful stuff. Um, here we go, right? Let people in. A dispersant is a molecule that physically separates the cement particles. Understand it, it's separated. The cement particles are the sand. So when you try to tool it with any tool, it has that tearing effect while the plasticizers is in its zone of working. It's a timeline. These molecules temporarily neutralize the forces of attraction between the cement particles, and this gives the concrete a much more liquid consistency. By taking a closer look, we can see that superplasticizer molecules are made up of long chains and links. Let's stop it right here. The superplasticizer attaches itself to the cement particles in what is known as the adsorption phase. The quality of the raw materials used to make the cement can hinder this adsorption process. The latest generation of so I believe if it's a wet cement, you know, one of the th if it's a wet cement, it's going to have um, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. The wet cement has a more effect or least effect, but all that counts. So your moisture is what counts. Um, on your product. Superplasticizers mm -hmm. takes these cement variations into account. Its more powerful linking system rapidly covers all the particles regardless of their type. After this, each element has a role to play. The chains, which are also longer, separate the particles and fluidize the mixture. Separate. This is known as steric repulsion. Pushes them away. Yeah, repulsion. It pushes them away. So when you're trying to finish it, you want a tight look. You can't do it while the plasticizer is, is working. Get it so, so on reaction with water, crystals form on the cement particles, cancelling out the superplasticizer's separating effect. Lowers it, because you do use water. To keep concrete in a liquid state for over two hours, Lafarge's scientists can control this natural crystallization phenomenon by adjusting the molecule's geometry and response speed. Well, we can blow that off now, but here's the point, is that, um, so if you're using 
cold water. Just think, the water has to evaporate to, for us to finish our concrete, right? So if it's a cold house and you just have water typically thrown against the wall and that water takes 40 minutes to dry, it's still in the cement, on the cement product now, it's going to take 60 minutes to dry, um, especially with the plasticizer. Now you remove the plasticizer and you've got a product that we know sand loves to suck water up if it's dry. Um, any all aggregates love to suck water up if, if they're dry. So this plasticizer is saying, I won't let you suck this water up. You've got a timeline, you've got to wait before I start dialing down. And, and it's like two hours. And they all tell you, you know, you've got half an hour, two hours timeline, whatever it may be. But it's always longer than that. This stuff really has other, they, other formulas you have to worry about, like the ambient temperature. How long would a typical water take to dry? I think you're stuck with that water at that point, that whatever you had in your initial mix, and now it's got to start flat. Um, um, I was, well, it's on the wall. It's going to have to start bleeding off or drying off before it can be really tooled. Hmm. So it's a fine line between love and hate.